Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo Karjalainen. Today we're going to take a look at these amps, a Marshall Plexi. This is a 50 watt version, but the same thing applies to the 100 watt version and how you can uh, control the volume without losing your sound too much at least. Why? Well, because they're quite loud and you have to play them quite loud to actually get a sound out of them, a proper sound. Now, uh, there is a bit of a backstory to this. I bought one of these Plexis uh, quite a long time ago and we went to do a show and I hadn't really tested the thing. Uh, and uh, I hooked everything up and it was my turn to do sound check and took the first chord and we realized this is not gonna work because uh, this was so loud that no one could be on stage with me. Uh, no one would have heard anything and yeah, it would have been hell. Um, so what I did, of course, was I tried the volume knob on the amp. That didn't do anything. The reissue version of the 1987X, the volume pot does basically nothing, uh, at least not to the volume. It makes the sound worse until the sound disappears completely. Uh, so the more volume you have on the amp, the better your sound is. But, but that's a problem because the volume doesn't change and you need to change volumes depending on the venue you're playing and uh, how hard your drummer hits and so on. Uh, so lucky for me I had a Rocktron Intel FX in the loop for delay and that had an output volume. So I tried that and uh, hey lo and behold uh, it worked fine. I mean, I could lower the volume from the output on the Rocktron Intel FX without losing the sound. Now, that's uh, something that you can do. You can put something in the loop to control the volume. I was asked a question recently by, I forget who it was, uh, if uh, you can play these things at bedroom volume. And I decided to find out. Uh, I know I've recorded this amp in in a flat where we didn't do bedroom volume but it was reasonably quiet so that the uh, the neighbors wouldn't go totally berserk and uh, that was fine now I decided to see how low we can actually go and so that you kind of get a chance to check out what it sounds like these days um, I'm using instead of an Intel FX Live, I'm using the Fractal Audio Axe FX and for these videos uh, I'm using one of these and I'm going to start using this live as well. Uh, it's basically just a volume pot that you put in the loop so that you can control the volume. Now the regular thing would be to put an attenuator after the power amp, so between speaker and amplifier, uh, where you could cut the volume. I've tried one of those way back when and I hated it, I absolutely hated it. Um, from my understanding they've come a long way since then so they're much better, so that's one option. But uh, this thing costs next to nothing on eBay and um, if you have something in the loop, uh, a rack mount unit with an output volume, you can use that. So I used the Fractal Audio Axe FX, uh, I used the Intel FX earlier but I also had the problem once that the Intel FX died on me. Now, I've always had a volume pedal in the loop as well to boost solos. One of these. This is a Boss volume pedal, uh, fairly affordable, uh, quite plasticky, so it's not great, but it does the job. Uh, and I've never had one of these break, even though it's plasticky and I've used it a lot. So what happened was when the Intel FX died, I still had this, so I had to set it to quite low, which made for interesting things when I tried to solo because I couldn't press it all the way down because then the volume became crazy. So that was a bit of a balancing act. But you can use a volume pot or a volume pedal to decrease the volume or a rack mount thing and basically anything with an output volume. Yeah, I'm gonna get this hooked up and I'll show you what it sounds like when you decrease the volume. Okay, so I have everything set up um, and I'm gonna start off at maximum volume so you get a uh, kind of, well, so you can see what it sounds like. It's going to get very loud here 
and I can't do any talking because this makes a lot of noise just by itself. Have a listen. Okay, so um, I also have a decibel meter so I can tell you how many decibels this is producing. Uh, it's just on my mobile phone, so it's not the most reliable, but it'll give you kind of ballpark figures. Uh, figured it's better than nothing. Okay, so let's get going. <laughs> So that was uh, roughly 85 decibels according to my phone. Now, I get the feeling that uh, that's not correct, it's much more. But hey, I don't know how the, the, the phone app probably crap, so, but that's kind of ballpark figure. What did happen was the stuff started moving about on the table here and I, I have a microphone on the table that fell to the floor. Uh, and everything shook, and it was insanely loud. Whew. I'll take the volume on the volume pot down to halfway, so you can hear the difference. Okay, so it's still insanely loud, it was 83 decibels now, and what I noticed was that um, it didn't compress as much as it did earlier, so it didn't really lower the volume, just the overall noise that the amp makes, but it will start lowering the volume as well, so I'll t take the volume down even further to what I normally sort of use during these videos, which is still louder than bedroom volume. Okay, here we go. So now it was roughly 79 decibels, I'll take it down even further. This volume that I just had is uh, basically not enough for the live situations where I'm usually in with the band Kilpi because our drummer beats the drums really loud and also our bass player is, <laughs> he has an old Ampeg and it's crazy. Hello Janne! Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but I'll take the volume down even further so you can check out what that sounds like. Alright, so here we go.
Okay, the phone app is still telling me it's uh, now it's 78 decibels roughly, uh, which seems uh, uh, it's not a big enough drop from the last volume because there was a noticeable drop there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's still bedroom volume because I think my ears are screwed up from starting to play really loudly. Um, I'll turn it down still a bit, see if I can get it to bedroom volume. All right. That was roughly bedroom volume, kind of, that's what I guess. If you have uh, kids and they're sleeping, that might still be a bit too loud, but if you can close two doors in between, it should be fine. Um, and that's the kind of volume that I don't think the neighbors would complain about. With this volume knob that I have here, I found it's really tough to get it to be quieter, quieter than this because it, you just move it a fraction and then it's suddenly it's quiet. Um, might be the amp, might be the volume knob itself. The sound, you lose a bit of the sound, but it's still quite good considering we're basically uh, at no volume. Now, uh, at least compared to what this thing sounds like normally. And yeah, the decibel meter was still saying something like 77, so not sure about how well that works, but who cares? <laughs> um, for me, I'd say that is basically almost bedroom volume. Now, why on earth anyone would want to have this in their bedroom and actually play it? I don't know, because you can get a Roland microcube or whatever, uh, and that will be kind of less fuss and bother, because you just plug in and start playing. Uh, this, you have to hook up stuff to into the loop and so on, and have a speaker cable and all that. But still, I can understand if you, can, if you want this, and you can only afford this, and you live somewhere where you, or you ha don't have a, the option to have this stored somewhere. Uh, now I can understand why someone would want to have it uh, in their bedroom and maybe even record it. Now, uh, the volume differences will not transmit on YouTube. I'm fairly sure of that. Uh, I have a bit of compression going on as well in the digital audio workstation. So, even that will kind of diminish the uh, volume differences, so you can't make out how loud it actually was when I played it first versus uh, the last volume that I did. You'll just have to take my word for it. If you've ever tried one of these, even this 50 watt thing is crazy loud. Um, so if you've ever tried one of these, you probably know how loud a 50 watt tube or valve, if you're English, uh, a valve head can be. Yeah, so that's basically it. You, you have to have something where you can control the volume in the loop. Now, what's happening inside the actual amp is that both the preamp and the power amp are working at their normal uh, kind of normal power, but the signal is diminished between the preamp and the power amp, which means that you get less volume. And for most of us, that's a very handy thing. Um, if you thought the sound wasn't great at bedroom level, um, maybe so. Uh, I thought it was okay, considering how quiet it got. But you can use this thing uh, at a gig without any trouble if you have something in the loop. 
because you'll never play at bedroom levels uh, at a gig. If you are, there's something <laughs> strange going on. Um, so that's basically how you decrease the volume and what it sounds like on a plexi head. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, like it if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, comment, let me know what you thought, or if you have uh, something else that you use, uh, maybe a power attenuator, and uh, let me know. Also, feel free to support me on Patreon because that helps me make more of these videos. So I hope you liked the video and uh, I hope to see you in another one. Uh, take care and yeah, see you in the next one. I'll end with a bit of noodling on this, but I'll just kick it up just a notch. Thank <laughs> you.